for headlining best for 2011 was quite a long uh, long drawn out affair kind of started about six or seven years ago when I thought one of my boyhood you know favourite bands ever The Cure I'd love to get them to best of all so started sending emails to the agent you know just totally knocked back because I had about 20 grand probably for a headline slot and uh, just wasn't was never going to do it and then gradually you know kept on offering more money kept on being more more and more persuasive until finally last year they kind of started showing some positive signs and uh, yeah and then suddenly it just all kind of came together and it was actually a year ago today we were waiting for the fest- festival awards and I was sort of checking my checking my black every five minutes waiting for the cure to confirm and yeah one of the best moments of my best of all life for me you know my sort of love affair with the cure if you will is, you know is from when i was 13 14 years old and first started hearing some of their you know classic songs on the radio so was, you know they were a radio one band and they were kind of quite quite mainstream in a way you know some of their hits so um yeah it's, it's really you know back to then and then i was an avid kind of collector i'd missed the first couple of years of their output and then you know i just collected all the albums from then on and you know i've continued to you know love the cure right you know even their kind of latest album they put out so yeah it's it's gone right back to when i was a kid really the uh the actual headline set at best of all was quite surreal about 10 minutes before they came on stage someone sort of nudged me and said Robbie, Robbie, you know, the cure are coming on in a minute. This is like what you've worked for for so long. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, it's like it was quite surreal. I didn't really think about it like the cure. I've done, you know, I finally got them here. And it, yeah, it was a massive deal. And, you know, and they came on. Robert Smith was really chatty and chirpy. The band looked really happy to be together. You know, some members that hadn't been in the band for years. You know, they played 34 odd tracks. They played, you know, 16 or 18 hits, you know big big sort of numbers and so it was you know it's a dream come true Robert Smith is, was so involved with the whole booking process. I went through his agent, but Robert Smith, very early on, um, got involved, you know, very hands-on. They don't have a manager. He doesn't have a manager. Um, you know, he, he kind of sorted everything out from checking the TV footage was right to, you know, what microphones they were using on stage and what their rider was. And, you know, we had a party for them afterwards, and, you, you know, they wanted pizza and beer and chips and stuff, and we, you know, we, we got exactly what they wanted. And it was, it was like, yeah, but you know, at no point did they kind of put on any demands on what they what they wanted um, out of the ordinary. And it was a total pleasure to work with um, Robert and his his agent to to make the booking happen. And they were like literally no hassle. And you know, they they came off stage, and I just thought, right, this is my chance. I've been talking to him for months on email. It's my chance to go and meet one of my sort of childhood heroes. So. I, w- I went and asked his huge bouncer if I could go and say hello to Robert, said who I was, and he knocked on the door, and a minute later I was in the dressing room with the four members of the band, just us four, in a little tiny port cabin room, and just having a chat and a beer, and talking about football and kids, and it was, you know, it's just really down to earth, so it was, it was great. Yeah, Robert, I mean, Robert Smith actually got in touch straight after Bestival and said he really wanted to um, put out the live set on our label Sunday Best Recordings uh, he wanted to, to do it for charity he t- didn't want anyone to be making any profit from it he just wanted it, all the money to go to a charity of our choice um, which ended up as the Youth Trust on the Isle of Wight who do amazing work with um, underprivileged kids and uh, yeah he just drove the whole thing he sort of said can I get some photos of our live performance we sent him those he goes right that's the front cover here's the rest of the graphics his designer did the rest of the graphics this is going to be um, how we do it it's going to be beginning to end t- double CD and on iTunes um, no, you know crowd noise he mixed it, the whole thing himself and you know a couple of weeks later or a week later it was all it was all finished and done and so we've, we've you know it's kind of a rush release but there's nothing rushed about the way it's been presented and the way it's going to sound I mean I got the actual two CDs last week and you know it just sounds amazing like the crowd roar especially because I know it's our festival it's you know it's a very proud feeling to hear that crowd roar and the, this, the audio is pristine I'm, I'm not always the biggest fan of live albums but this is um, you know this is a, a, an amazing album 
Yeah, the, the Isle of Wight Youth Trust are a, cha- a charity based on the Isle of Wight. Um, the lady who runs it, Eileen Monks, has done the welfare at Bestival for, well, since we began. So she looks after lost kids, she looks after kids that have drunk too much, she looks after anyone who's feeling a bit bit sorry for themselves who needs help you know they're, they're just incredible people all volunteers uh, the youth trust does that on the island the year round looks after kids that have been neglected abused um you know young adults that need help of feeling suicidal you know all, all kinds of manner of things quite quite heavy stuff and they're but they're lovely warm people and so i was really pleased that we could do this gesture of giving all the proceeds from this album to charity and robert smith bless his heart you know has, has, has kind of agreed that that's the charity so we, you know we're, we're hoping we're going to sell a lot of, rec- of cds and downloads and we've already had a lot of orders in from america from all around the world people want this you know cure fans want it other people that have heard about their performance want it and, and hopefully new music fans too Never thought this day would end.